Normally people play Historic Brawl just to have fun, but what if instead you try to build the saltiest, staxiest, taxiest deck possible? Will anyone even play with you? <laughs> Let's find out. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Afrata Live, and today we're trying to build the saltiest historic brawl deck possible. So think of a list of things that people hate to play against in Magic. Counter spells, wraths, mass land destruction, stacks pieces, tax pieces, hard locks. If it's on that list, it's in our deck, probably many times over, and our goal for today is not to win games by actually getting our opponent's life total to zero, although that'll probably happen sometimes, but the idea is if we can make our deck miserable enough, opponents will just scoop and we'll get free wins because they don't want to play against our miserable deck. So let's talk about our mono white salt deck, some of the locks and combos and pieces that make it just absolutely miserable to play against. Jump into some games and see if anyone will even play against us. So the perfect commander for our mono white salt deck is Gideon of the Trials. You might remember this one from last week's Modern Against the Odds. Gideon comes down from the command zone and forms a hard lock with deification. Deification makes it so Gideon Gideon can't die. Gideon, we can emblem, and that makes it so we can't die with the emblem. As long as we have a Gideon, we can't lose a game. Our opponent can't win the game. So as long as we can keep a creature and deification on the battlefield, that'll keep Gideon on the battlefield. That'll make it so we can never die, and our opponent just won't be able to do anything relevant. We also got a backup lock in the 99 with Sarah the Benevolent. Sarah has an emblem that makes a worship, essentially. As long as we control a creature, any amount of damage we take will not put our life total below one. So this is a way we can keep from ever dying to damage. So we could set deification on Sarah to protect it if we wanted to. So that's lock number one, but it gets way better. We also have a miserable creature lock with Overwhelming Splendor in Elish Norgrand Cenobite. Overwhelming Splendor already is super salty card. It is eight mana, but it's a one-sided humility. All of our opponent's creatures, once we curse them, are one ones with no abilities. So that that by itself is absolutely miserable to play against, but if that's not enough, we also have Elish Norn, which gives all of our opponent's creatures negative two, negative two, so if we can keep these two pieces on the battlefield, our opponent just can't play creatures anymore. If they do, they're going to be negative toughness and just die immediately. We also have Solemnity and Nine Lives, another lock that keeps us from ever dying to damage. Solemnity makes it so Nine Lives can't get counters. Nine Lives makes it so we can't take any damage. All the damage to us is prevented. We also have Book of Exalted Deeds with Mutaval in Faceless Haven. Book of Exalted Deeds can turn an angel into a Platinum Angel. Puts a counter on it that makes it so we can't lose a game, our opponent can't win the game. Well, Mutaval and Faceless Haven have all creature types, so they're angels. The trick here is, though, they're lands, and lands are really hard to kill. Most historic brawl decks are going to be able to kill creatures. A literal platinum angel isn't that good, but a platinum angel that's on a land, assuming we never turn that land into creature form again, just beats some decks all by itself. We also have a one-sided Armageddon combo in Fall of the Thread and Soul Guide Lantern. Fall of the Thread in this six mana saga, when it ETBs and gets the first lore counter, we blow up all the lands on the battlefield, but then it's supposed to be like soft land hate because for the next two turns, it lets each player return two lands into play. So people get to rebuild their mana base. However, if we have Soul Guide Lantern, after we fall the Thread and blow up the lands, we can just wipe our opponent's graveyard so they won't have lands to get back. We get to get back four lands over the next couple of but our opponent's not going to have any mana to do anything with. Speaking of lands, we also got Karn the Great Creator, Liquid Metal Coating. Liquid Metal Coating turns our opponent's lands into artifacts, then we plus Karn on them to destroy the land, so it blows up a land each turn so our opponent can't play magic. We also got just every tax piece possible. Curse of Silence, Anointed Peacekeeper. We can name our opponent's commander just to keep our opponent from playing it. This is the format where Dranith Magistrate is banned because people will play it and make it so you can't play your commander. Curse of Silence, Anointed Peacekeeper, not quite as strong, but still, it can really annoy opponent by not letting them use their commander to execute their game plan. Invasion of Gabacon, Elite Spellbinder, picks apart our opponent's hand, Redain Texas Spells, even Mind Sensor for opponent tutors, pretty much just says no, God Pharaoh's stat you, makes all of our opponent's stuff cost two more Elish Norn Mother of the Machines, shuts down our opponent's ETB triggers, and then of course, 
we got Mana Tithe. We don't get to play a ton of counters because we're Mono White, but Mana Tithe is a great way to get people. And then we got pieces to protect our other combo pieces. Avis and Angel of Hope just gives all of our stuff indestructible to make it really difficult for our opponent to break out all these locks we're talking about. Surge of Salvation, Teferi's Protection, good at protecting our board for a turn. And that is Mono White Salt for Historic Brawl. That is our deck for today. So let's jump into some games and see if anyone will even play with us. How many turns do they make it through before they realize what our deck's doing, how miserable it is to play against, and just scoop and move on to the next match. That's what we're going to find out. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back in a bit for the wrap-up. Need some salty cards to annoy your friends? Well, you can snag them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. We are playing the saltiest historic brawl deck of all time. Opponent's playing Calyx. What do we what do we do about that? So we have ramp, we have main, I think we just mulligan this. All right. Well, I mean, we got a plan. Deification Gideon. I don't know how that plan holds up against Calyx deck. Opponent going to scry. Well, play the land past the turn. Play the planes and Wolf Haven getting the ramp on. Yeah, I think we maze Mind Stone and start scrying. Land. Jukai Naturalist. And Calyx at a discount. Well, we will scry. Deck of many things, definitely going to the bottom. Well, we will scry. We'll keep the land, although I'm not sure it's going to be enough here. So we play the land. Play Restoration of Ajano, get a Plains. Our opponent gets to start copying stuff with Calyx, though, which, since we don't have any removal, is probably going to beat us. Opponent, land. Nissian Wanderer. I mean, we basically need to find a Wrath. Gets in with the Calyx. Copies their Dork, gets some triggers. Finds a land. Well, we will scry with Maze Mindstone. Muta Vault, gonna go to the bottom for now. Well, there's a Cleansing Nova for next turn. Is that, is that enough? Now well, let's discard Invasion of Gabacon. Get back Invasion of Gabacon. See what our opponent's up to. Invasion of Chandelar, Swords, Kenris Transformation. We'll take the Invasion of Chandelar. Deification on Gideon. All right, well, I mean, okay, that's step one. There's a deification. Our opponent's not doing a ton this turn. And now we get to wrath their board. Copies their dorks. Yeah, another naturalist, another counter, another land. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, they're gonna be able to cast this battle to get their stuff. Oh, there's, there's the Avacyn. Well, Faceless Haven, so we know they can kill the Restoration. So I think we do have to just Cleansing Nova, destroy all creatures, slow things down a little bit. Our opponent can obviously get them back with their battle, which is awkward, but pass the turn. We got a game plan, we got a game plan. We'll see if it works, opponent. Land, replays Calyx. I mean, Gideon is good at shutting down Calyx in specific. Opponent passes. Well, one, two, draw a card, see if we can land. We do not. Well, play Gideon. Take it up on the Calyx so that doesn't start copying things and pass the turn. Well, yeah, okay, Invasion of Chandelar. Gonna get some stuff back for the future. I wonder if I put it blocks with Calyx. Ooh, fall the Thran. Well, we will. Turn on Gideon. Attack the Invasion of Gabacon. Flip the Invasion of Gabacon. Cavalier. Attack the Gabacon. Protect the Cavalier. Land for our opponent. Runs out the Wander. Runs out the Jukai Naturalist. So opponent's gonna rebuild their board. Kenra's Transformation, sure. It's another land, goes attacking. I'll play a Solemn. Get a land. Gideon. 
Naturalist. Pass the turn. Calyx makes its return. I mean, opponent has a lot of cards in hand, but most of them are lands, which is which is good. Machiko's Reign of Truth to pump the Wanderer. Finds even more lands. Opponent's down to one non-land card. That's not that much. Yeah, let's just block. Draw a card. Idyllic Tutor. We don't want to get hit by Calyx. We don't want to lose Gideon. Okay, let's Elite Spellbinder. See what's in our opponent's hand. Okay, all lands. Idyllic Tutor. Solemnity. Gideon. Take up on Calyx. Pass the turn. Boy, if we can get the lands for this Avacyn, I think we just lock our opponent out of this game. Opponent draws a Marari's Wig. All right, so opponent has literally all the man in the world. Yeah, all the man in the world. Opponent goes to combat. We are going to let it go. So opponent gets to start putting things into play from their hand for free. Yeah. And get some triggers. Oh, if we could find Graveyard Hate. Reckoner, Bank, Busta. Well, I think we, one, two, three. Nine lives. Emblem Gideon. Hit you for three. All right. Opponent gets to start putting lands into play. <laughs> oh, we're a little bit of protection away from just straight up locking this game. Ethereal Armor. Plays a land. Goes to combat. Hits the Gideon down to one. Not dead. Now what? Still didn't hit a land. Oh, we really wanted a land. We really wanted a land. A Gideon. Tick up on Naturalist. Hmm, how do we find lands? Did we turn on? Oh, we did. All right, let's, wow, this feels so bad. Arch Varaska. well, go attack it. A bone, it gets to put a land into play. Elspeth conquers death. Doesn't do anything, thankfully, because of Solemnity. <laughs> yes, are we done? Not yet, we draw land. Well, play the land. Take up Gideon on the Naturalist. Let's play Bank Buster. No counters, though. Play Deck of Many Things. And we're gonna pass. We can crew the Bank Buster to, we gotta keep a creature on the battlefield. We gotta keep a creature on the battlefield to keep the deification on, to keep the Gideon on. Found it, puts a land into play, draws a card. Reprobation, okay, but that doesn't kill the creature. We'll still crew the Bank Buster, that's fine. We still have a creature on the battlefield. The creature being a zero one doesn't actually change much of anything. Found it gets to draw land. If we can find Graveyard Hay, I think we do just Fall of Thran. Thalia's, ooh, Thalia's Lancers. Okay, that's actually kind of interesting. Thalia's Lancers. Take Nykthos. Oh, this is big. Play Nykthos. This might be the end. This might be the end. Actually, let's Avacyn first. Avacyn. Take up Gideon. On the Naturalist. Pass the turn. Okay, okay. Opponent puts their land into play. Sure. When is this scoop? When is this scoop? When is the salty scoop? Pony passes. Once we blow up all the lands, I think the salty scoop comes. Go to combat. Guardian Idol. I guess we just get to play everything. Play Guardian Idol. Play Liquid Metal Coating. Make some Nykthos mana. Overwhelming Splendor You. Activate Deck of Many Things. Oh my god, we hit discard our hand. Oh no, we're good, okay. Uh, play Restoration of Ajano. Doesn't do anything. Take up Gideon on the Jukai Naturalist. Are we done yet, opponent? Are we done yet, opponent? Are we done yet? All the mana, the dream, but it doesn't matter because we have the Salty deck. Our boat's got the Marari's Wake. Wow. Not dead because we have a Gideon emblem, thankfully. <laughs> Calyx makes its return. Wow, that was a blowout. Well, Gideon, take up on Galit. Calyx, let's play Azur's Gateway. 
Our opponent's got a little bit too much mana over there. Fall of the Thran. Yeah, opponent had just a, a tiny bit too much mana. Just a smidge. <laughs> the board went from so big to so little. Get back Nick those, get back a snow covered plains. I mean, opponent gets to get back their lands, but they're not gonna have a million mana like they had before. Take up Gideon. Play the land, Azur's Gateway. Yeah, let's get rid of the Karn, I think. We might need this Wrath, pass the turn. And passes. Two lands for everyone. Uh, we will go Faceless Haven and Arch of Araska. Okay, so we're we're back to even on mana at least. Gideon, take it up on the Calyx. Loot with the Gateway. Get rid of Lotus Field. Play Smothering Dive past the turn. Okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, many of our locks have been exiled by that farewell. Uh, but wow, opponent's paying for the smothering tithe, runs out of pilgrim. How long until our opponent gives up? I can't believe our opponent's still, still sending through this. Loot with gateway. Get rid of the mind sensor. Wrath the board. Oh, they have like heroic intervention? No. And take up Gideon. Oh, Calyx costs infinite now. Uh, your command tower will not damn. <laughs> Does that say Calyx costs 11? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that says Calyx costs 11. <laughs> and there is the GG's and 38 life. But uh, apparently locking and blowing up all the lands is, is pretty good. Pretty good, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Our opponent, uh, they stuck it out for a while though. I mean, they did scoop at 38 life, but uh, but they did stick it out for a while. Eventually though, the saltiness of our deck was just too much for, uh, for our poor opponent to handle. We are playing the saltiest, staxiest, historic brawl deck possible. Oh, uh, seeing, uh, seeing how long people stick around. How long do they stick around through the through the saltiest deck in the history of uh, of the format? <laughs> Opponent, snow covered variety passes. Uh, well, snow covered plains. This lotus field's looking a little little awkward, but we do have some catch up ramp. We probably crack this old guide lantern honestly. I think we sack it to draw a card. We would like to just restoration of Ijano and then lotus field to get back whatever land soul guide. I mean, the main purpose of soul guide is to Armageddon with Fall of Thran, and we're a ways off of that, and we don't even have Fall of Thran. Oh, boom, it's passing. Well, let's draw cards. See if we hit a hit a untap land. We do not, and we do not. Well, okay. Lotus Field, sack the planes. A boon and swamp, and Liliana. Sure, 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 sure. Bone it, gonna tick up. Well, we'll discard a cleansing Nova. We just draw a planes, A. Eh? Well, let's restoration of a Jano. Grab a planes. Play of planes. Pass the turn. I mean, at some point we can reset the Liliana with the ossification. Pound it, gonna draw a couple cards, give us a poison counter. Eternal Wanderer. Discard to Fairy's Protection. What if they reanimate Dusk Mangler? Enters the battlefield, each opponent sacks a creature, discards a card, loses for life. Yeah, let's Soul Guide Lantern. Get rid of the Dusk Mangler. Play a Gideon. Ossification the Liliana. Hit back. And pass turn. A land would be sweet. A land lets us play God Pharaoh statue. All right, opponent kills a Gideon. Sure. Back to the command zone. God Pharaoh statue would be really sweet here. Well, there goes the God Pharaoh statue. Wow, we get to keep the God Pharaoh statue. Interesting. Well, play a land, play the God Pharaoh statue. Uh, pass the tr I am absolutely shocked our opponent did not take the God Pharaoh statue. Yeah, gonna be gonna be hard to cast stuff. We'll sack ossification. Opponent passes. Well, go to combat, smack you with the restoration. Make a token. Replay the Gideon. Take up the Gideon. Yeah, we'll play the planes, pass the turn. Opponent down to 16. <laughs> 
<laughs> Would you like to cast some spells upon it? They all cost two more. My bad, my bad. Did you want to play magic in this historic brawl game? Apologies, not happening. Liliana costs seven. Plus they're mono black, and while mono black can kill enchantments now, they still can't kill artifacts. I am absolutely floored that they did not take the god pharaoh stat oh here it comes and there is the scoop and the, okay our opponent did pretty good i will give them credit they made it to what turn turn five or something maybe it was turn six they made it they made it a few turns before the the saltiness got the best of them but <laughs> god pharaoh statue a little, little salty just a just a smidge yeah, we'll keep this. We don't have any any early ramp, but this hand gets powerful. Yes, we will we will keep. How fast does this work? Reanimate a creature power two or less. It's gonna take a couple turns of uh, of setup at least. We would like to draw another normal land. There we go. All right, well, snow covered plains go. Opponents, snow covered plains and priest of forgotten gods. Obnoxious. Well, snow covered plains go. Opponents. Cabretti Courtyard. Well, if we never play any creatures, Priest doesn't do as much. <laughs> Opponent gets a tap land. It's in for one. Well, land. Yeah, let's just Book of Exalted Deeds. It works really well with Nykthos. It doesn't do anything super immediately, but it is very good with Nykthos. All right, opponent has a Lauren of the Third Pass to blow up the Book of Exalted Deeds and gets in for one. Well, so much for the Nykthos plan. Oh, they got the land too. All right, all right. All right, opponent's doing things. They are doing things. Play the land, play the Smothering Tithe. Would you like to pay the two opponent? Uh, opponent, Snow Covered Plains, and Lisa. So we're gonna need a Wrath at some point. Opponent gets in, hits us. We draw land, play the land. I think we just play Gideon, take up on the Lisa. Still want to try to avoid just playing a creature into this setup if we can help it. Wow, opponent says yes. All right, command tower. Wrinkle master of pranks. Yeah, let's, uh, oh, if we kill it, it's just going to come back anyway. Yeah, I guess we just got to let it go, as awkward as that is. All right, Gideon dies, unfortunately. Goes back to the command zone. Wrath, we need a wrath. Well, Elspeth Conqueror's death is not exactly a wrath, but it is good. Well, Elspeth Conqueror's death. Gotta get rid of the Lisa. Opponent can sack it, but if they sack it, it doesn't come back. The other stuff will come back, but it doesn't come back. Wow, all right, sacks and sacks. So we get drained, opponent pays. We will play the land. They get back the Lauren. Yeah, we just need to find a Wrath. Like, we need to find a Wrath, and all these problems will take care of themselves. Lauren going after the Smothering Tithe. And Alicia. Nothing to get back yet, though. Opponent gets in with Rankle. Discards a card, draws a card, loses to life. Yeah, I guess we just discard Elish Norn here. Like, it's just not good against what our opponent's doing. You draw planes. Now, one, two. Play Invasion of Gabacon. Cleansing Nova, Dreadhound, Yeheni. Opponent has a bunch of mana. Let's take Heliod's Intervention. Play Elspeth. Take down Elspeth. Yeah, I guess we just take a land. Not great. Yeah, we might be in trouble here. We might actually be in trouble in this one. We we have just not hit any removal, and our opponents played a lot of creatures. Opponent plays a land. Yeah, Henny. We're not, like, literally dead, but we're not super alive. Okay, sex to make you Henny indestructible so they can get back the Lauren. Yeah, we're at the draw something or, or bust stage of the game. <laughs> so it's been a very weird draw. No no sweepers, no removal, and our opponent has just uh, really flooded the board. It's us. We've just drawn all of our Planeswalkers, but our Planeswalkers aren't actually doing anything. Yeah, this is it. Like, we are draw something or lose. Draw a card loses a life. Salistis, that doesn't change anything. Opponent passes, we draw a deck of many things, that doesn't change anything. We sack the Cryptic Cave. Desperation. Navigation Orb, and yeah. Well, that Priest of Forgotten Gods. Well, I guess we're the ones to get locked out of that game. <laughs>
saltiness time. We are trying to play the, the saltiest possible historic brawl deck. What is this? Beginning your end step, conjure a random card from its spell deck like exile of Feast Zone with three egg counters on it. Oh my god, okay. That's a that's a lot of that's a lot of text. Tab land. Well, we will play a land and pass the turn. Mountain. So next turn they can play Dargaz. All right, all right, all right, sure. Well, play the land. Maybe we just have to tutor up an answer for the dragon. Although they'll probably attack with it, right? Well, you know what? Let's just Spellbinder and see what our opponent's doing. Getting information and taxing is always good. This will let us know too, like how likely is it that they can blow up our lock pieces? Although not a big fan of this making eggs. All right, opponent, what do you got going on over there? Cut down in Zatora. Well, definitely taking Zatora. Then cut down our elite spellbinder. That makes Zatora pretty expensive. Opponent. Untapped. Didn't even kill the spellbinder. Interesting. Interesting. Opponent land. Commander. Conjures. An egg of some kind. Play the land and pass the turn. I mean, I think we just got a wandering emperor here. We gotta we gotta try to get rid of the Dargaz. Kills the Elite Spellbinder. All right. Wandering Emperor. Snipe the dragon. Okay, so only one egg. Only one egg. That could have been a lot worse. Uh, yeah, Exile Dargaz. Gain a bit of life. Oh, and it passes. Play the land. One, two, three, four, five, six. I might be able to replay it. You know what? Let's deck him any things. I can't resist. I can't resist. It could do any number of things. You never know what it might do. It could even make us discard our hand. Hopefully that doesn't happen. That would be sad. But as a way we can draw cards, we can set up one of our locks at some point. We just want to, we want to find a little more protection maybe, at least in our land drops. Little scared of what this egg might be. Getting to the point where we can wrath after the egg comes down would also be kind of helpful. All right. Daragaz returns makes another egg well we do draw land so let's snow covered plains ossification get rid of the commander make a two two actually do we make a two two or do we tick up yeah let's make a two two yeah i think we just pass and deck him anything we're hoping for card draw mode. Let's see what was under the egg. Mana form Hellkite. All right, that's kind of scary. We're one land away from White Sun's Twilighting, which would be nice. This card seems kind of busted. <laughs> Opponent. Commander returns. Keeping those eggs. Oh, come on. Be good, deck of many things. Please, please not the discarding hand. We'd rather just draw cards. That would be the best. All right, we get an elite spellbinder. Opponent gets an egg. Land. Well, okay. Idyllic Tutor. Oh boy, this is sketchy. For Restoration of Vajano. Play Restoration of Vajano to get a Plains. Play the Plains. Make a Samurai. Pass the turn, but this is not a great position. Up out it untaps with a handful of dragons. And a whole bunch of eggs. Fatal Pushes makes a 1-1. One, one. I mean, we do get to Wrath next turn. We get to Wrath and gain some life. We're going to have to deal with the eggs. Wow, they foretold. Interesting. What would a Jund deck be foretelling? More removal, probably. Yeah, down to 15. And makes some eggs and loses some dragons. Well, we'll discard Azur's Gateway. Get it back. White Sun's Twilight for five. How about a bad egg? What's the, what's the, I don't even know what is in this spell. Same thing. Was there one card in the spell book? Dragon Lord Servant. Uh-huh. All right. Poison the cup. So it was the removal spell. These eggs, though, goes attacking. Hits us to 18. Loses the illusion. All right, well, new plan. Loot with Azur's Gateway. See if we can hit our land drop. Get rid of the Paulo. Play Solemnity. Play Nine Lives. Let the salt flow. Opponent. 
Moonvale Regent. Let's see what enchantment destruction our opponent might have access to. Ancient Brass Dragon, okay. What does this do? Roll a d20, reanimate a ton of stuff. All right. More card draw. Boy, we could use another Wrath. Another Wrath would be kind of nice. Although we're not dying, because we we have locked at the moment. Opponent gets in, hits us. Nothing happens. We draw Jano. Yeah, let's loot with Azure's Gateway. Boy, you get to reanimate a bunch of dragons. Oh, God. Actually, on second thought, maybe we just... Let's do it this way. Let's Thalia's Lancers to get Nykthos. Play Nykthos. Pass the... Her. The egg hatches into Shivan Dragon. And then our opponent's gonna Terra the Peaks. I mean, our opponent is going off. They just, we, we have locked them out of the game for the time being. This is a ridiculous board. They even get to get in and reanimate with Ancient Brass Dragon and get back their commander, get back everything opponent. Actually, does it say deal? Oh, it doesn't work, does it? Prevent the damage. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, our lock even stops that. I don't know how long our opponent gives it. How long until our opponent just gives up? Opponent gets in. Gonna learn about nine lives in solemnity. Opponent just trying to do cool Timmy dragon things. And our deck is saying no. Yeah, that doesn't actually work, unfortunately. Well, uh, let's nick those, make some white mana. Azur's gateway loot. Get rid of the snow-covered planes. Deck of many things, spin it to win it. Hey, draw two cards. We will ex oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay, play a Bonders Enclave. Make a little, a little, oh boy, this might be it. This might be where the, where the salting ends. Uh, one, two, three, and four. Play an Overwhelming Splendor, targeting you. Uh, Cold Steel Heart on white. Yeah, I guess now we will be the attacker. It's a lot of nice, uh, nice 1-1 one -one dragons over there, opponent. I mean, we have actually another lock next turn with Elish Norn. I mean, once we Elish Norn, they are, they're just actually hard locked out of this game. And then I imagine the, the salt will flow. Our opponent just did so many cool things, but none of those things matter. <laughs> none of them matter, opponent. Four drop mythic dragons. For one ones, Shivan Dragon going down from Might Token. <laughs> I can't believe our opponent hasn't quit yet. I cannot believe they haven't quit. Next turn, I think is a quit turn. Once Alish Norn hits the stack, I imagine. Yeah, that's a nice eight mana one one. Uh, Azur's Gateway. Why not? Loot. Get rid of Vigiano. And yeah, I I think this is where it ends. Alish Norn. All your 1-1s one become dead. Play a land. Play a Lauren for no value. Deck of many things. Can we roll a 20? Can we roll a 20? No. 14 draw two cards. Loot. I can't believe our opponent hasn't given up. Why have they not given up? Why are they still playing this game? Go to combat attack you. Hit you. <laughs> Woo, that's a nice... A nice graveyard full of dragons. Oh, we almost got alchemied by Dargaz. Dargaz seems like a cool card. Wow, they didn't even put it. Wow, we totally wrecked them. They were so in on the reanimation plan, they put their commander in the graveyard, and then and then uh, we stopped that. All right, salty rope number one. Where's the crowd surfing Karn? Where's our alchemy overwhelming splendor wizards? Turn into uh, draft from overwhelming splendor's spellbook. Humility, stasis, <laughs> ensnaring bridge. That would actually get me to play alchemy cards if. If they if they give us an alchemy card that can can spell book a stasis i am i'm all in uh you would get me watsy you'd get me i think we're gonna take advantage of our free mall here sounds risky we only have two lands we have no ramp spells well okay i don't know if this is actually better but we'll we'll try it uh well play muta vault and liquid metal coating could do something eventually. Uh, I think we need to send a message. We need to send a message that our opponents, ha ha, your gate is an artifact. Opponent, confused, confused face dot JPEG. <laughs> uh, play the land. Do we just run out Gideon? Yeah, let's play Gideon. Play Gids, make an emblem. All right, we're not gonna do that every turn for no reason. <laughs> Opponent, try Sanctum, for Rexian Arena. All right, that's a, that's a little annoying. That's a little annoying, I will say. Overwhelming Splendor. Well, Gideon's gonna go beatdowns. Get in, hit ya. Opponent. 
takes the beats. Run out Solemnity. Go. Bone it. Draws a card, loses a life. Well, I mean, we'd like to hit our lands up to Overwhelming Splendor. Or some ramp. Wow, opponent draws two cards, loses two life. Trying to hit their land drops. Does not, oh my goodness, does not. And okay. I don't know if we made our opponent scoop early in that one or their deck made them scoop early, but we'll take credit. It was our salty, salty activation on that liquid metal coating on turn one. Opponent, they just, they couldn't stand it. They couldn't stand it. Narsa seems scary. Where's our, where's our graveyard? Oh, can we get someone with a mind sensor? That's one of our salty cards that I think, don't think we've got anyone with yet. I don't think we've got anyone with a mind sensor. Uh, snow covered planes. Go. Oh boy, opponent. <laughs> so, so kind. Just wait till you see what we're playing, opponent. You might change your tune. Uh, let's just spirited companion draw a card. Snow covered planes. Forsaken Crossroad untaps and passes. Yeah, let's just Snow Covered Plains in Mind Sensor, I think. I don't know if there's any way we actually get a thrill of possibility, okay? Yeah, that that works. Expressive iteration, okay. Opponent might be in greedy on lands here. Might be one of those. I'm playing a bunch of cantrips so I can be They did discard a land. All right, maybe they just want to draw cards. I don't even know. Opponent, come on, Evolving Wilds. Come on, Evolving Wilds. Not a land. Tap land. Well, I mean, we're going to play the Mind Sensor. Draw a land. Karn's Bastion. Navigation Orb. Sack it. We still get to... We still get to search our library. Snow covered plains. Hit ya. I wish we had a removal spell for Narset. I mean, I guess it's just flashing back card draw at the moment. Ornithopter of Paradise and a tap land. Ooh, Teferi's protection. Play land. Play Thalia's Lancers. I don't know what we're tutoring up here. I don't know what we're tutoring up. We already have the Nykthos. That's something we tutor up a lot. Godfaro statue is probably the funniest. Elish Norn's good. Avison's good. Let's let's just do it. We came here to make people salty. Let's take let's take one of our saltiest cards. <laughs> Seems especially good against a spell slingery cantrip style deck. Pretty brutal. Assuming we can get it down, which is not a not a guarantee. Not a guarantee. Opponent untaps. This seems like the kind of deck that's gonna have counters of some kind. I like that they don't know about the Nykthos yet. Narset. Narset leaving up counter mana probably. So if we attack with this and they kill it, that's kind of bad. Kick a Skyclave Relic. Play Azur's Gateway. Yeah, we're not even gonna attack, let's just pass. Maybe that, maybe we're too conservative, I don't know. Like, Narset is definitely scary. Whirlwind of Thought, Prowess. And then they get to cast, like, Expressive Iteration from the Graveyard. Attacks. Expressive Iteration, draws some cards. Well, let's see what they reveal. I think we do. Unless we know, we, uh, unless we know it's obviously not going to work. I think we block with everything. If our opponent can cast some spells, if our opponent can cast some spells to keep it alive, that's fine. That would require them tapping down. And then we get down the God Pharaoh statue, which is going to make their life much harder, assuming uh, assuming it sticks. All right, going to lightning bolt, trigger prowess, draw a card. Well, okay, we will loot. Let's get rid of the planes. All right, so Narset lives, does its thing. Our board dies. Opponent passes. Well, we will God Pharaoh statue. Make things a little tougher on you. Okay, Defiant Strike, draw cards. Sure. All right. If our opponent can actually try to answer the God Pharaoh statue, we can hopefully piece out with Teferi's protection. Eganjo. Opponent has drawn a ton of cards. Everything costing two more is... That's a big tax, though. That's a big tax. Chandra Awaken Inferno. All right, that's a, that's a good one. <clears throat> that is a good one. Opponent draws some cards, makes a Chandra. Well, let's loot. Get rid of a Guardian Idol. Get emblemed. 
goes attacking. Oh, they have to exile it too. I guess they can exile from our graveyard. Exile the navigation orb, sure. Cannot cast it though because of the God Pharaoh statue. We take our beads down to 21. What do we do about a Chandra though? That's the, that's the real question. We get pinged. Let's do it this way. Let's play Wandering Emperor. Blink Narset. Play Gideon. Take up on Chandra. Play the Field of Ruin past the turn. Opponent can use their Den of the Bugbear. We can't Teferi's Protection this turn, unfortunately. Okay, more card draw. The Gideon doesn't actually stop the emblems. Well, okay, there goes Eternal Wander. That's not ideal. All right, all right, all right. We did have plans for that. This just stops Chandra from like shooting down our our creatures and planeswalkers. Yeah, opponent, I we prevented all the damage of that. That's not gonna work. Opponent. What happened to their commander? I'm so confused. Uh, we'll get rid of Karn. Oh, did they put it back to the command zone? They might have put it back to the command zone. Well, one, two, draw a card. What do we have exiled under this? A two yet? We do have a two. Play Bank Buster. So we can draw even more cards. Draw with Bank Buster. Nine lives. That could be good eventually. Well, uh, Gideon, take up on Chandra. All right, let's play the land past the turn. Well, we'll see. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. We've definitely slowed our opponent down. Realizes emblem's the way to go. We've slowed our opponent down, but they're still doing things, unfortunately. We were hoping to avoid that. We were hoping to avoid our opponent being able to do anything, but yeah, what can you do? We're getting closer to flipping this Azur's Gateway, although I don't know what we're gonna do with all the mana. I don't even know if we wanna flip it at this point. It might be better not to flip it so we can keep looting. Yeah, they must have accidentally put Narset when we blinked it back to, back to the command zone instead of letting it come back into play. Archmage Emeritus, all right, even more, so much card draw. Loot. Get rid of the Arcane Signet. Proliferate. Bankbuster Gideon. I don't know if Elishorn does much against our opponent's deck, honestly. Let's draw a card. We would kind of like to hit a Wrath. Resetting the creatures would be sweet. Draw a card, it's a Plains. Chandra. Loot with Gateway. Liquid Metal Coating. Uh, yeah, let's get rid of Liquid Metal Coating. Play a land. Yeah, I guess, I mean... I guess we might as well play the Elish Norn. Let's play the Elish Norn. At some point, we gotta be able to attack the Chandra because these... <laughs> unless we could actually get a lock assembled, at some point, these emblems are going to beat us. About it. All right, so Kinzan makes a couple dorks. Three emblems now. Once this Narset comes back and starts doing it, uh, doing things, this is gonna be a lot of damage super quick. Definitely need to find a Wrath. Leon and Light Scribe, okay. Another way to pump the team. Going after Gideon. Block with Elish Norn. Consider to draw about a million cards. Well, let's proliferate. Keep Gideon alive. Pona gets to draw, Pona gets to draw, Pona gets to pump. Oh, come on, Wrath. Come on, Wrath. So Gideon goes to one. Opponent plays a tap land. We untap. Triple emblem down to 14. Planes, not super helpful. Uh, well, one, two. Draw with Bank Buster. One. Loot with Gateway. Two, 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 four. All right, so we can, we can exile a three. I think we just get rid of Paulo. Actually, maybe we want the Paulo. Let's get rid of the land. We have we have a lot of mana at the moment. All right, get rid of the land because we do get to double trigger Paulo, which is nice. So we can, let's see, play Lorna of the Third Path. Double triggers. Get rid of the Whirlwind. Get rid of the Ornithopter. Trim back on the mana a little bit. 
attack the Chandra opponent. Takes it. Elite Spellbinder. Double triggers. How expensive can we make your cards, cat? Uh, cards cost. I guess Shelter does draw a card. Yeah, let's take the boots. Hasty Narset would be annoying. Gideon, take up on Chandra. Pangya, pass the. We, we essentially have our own Chandra emblem. All right, well, we know our opponent can't interact with us, but we also know that these Chandra emblems are going to get us eventually. This might be a Teferi's protection turn. We gotta find, we gotta find the nine line Solemnity lock, I think. I think that's our best bet. Getting a deification could also work. All right, Monastery Mentor. All right, opponent passes. Well, we will untap and draw. Uh, get chandra -ed. Yeah, we don't have too many turns left before we die to Chandra. That is, that is going to happen. Bonders Enclave. So it's more card draw, technically. Well, okay. One, two. Draw with Bankbuster. Loot with Azur's Gateway. Vanquished the Horde. That is somewhat interesting. Get rid of the land. This is a tricky position. Play Bonders Enclave. Attack Chandra. Attack Chandra. Well, Gideon. Take up on the Chandra. How do we beat the emblems though? That's the, that is the issue. That is the issue. One, two, three. Draw with Bonders Enclave. Yeah, pass the turn. Going to bounce a Tuara. So let's Lauren draw. And proliferate and Teferi's protection. The problem is we have to find a way to do something this turn or we lose to the emblems. And I'm not sure. We need like the solemnity to go with the nine lives. We gotta find something. We get a couple redraws, which is good. I guess theoretically Wandering Emperor can gain us enough life that we, we have one more turn. But basically, if we are going to, uh, if we're gonna do some locking, we gotta do it now. We can wrath away the creatures, but that doesn't keep us from losing to Chandra emblems. Like Vanquish the Horde does deal with the creatures, which is good. Going to pass. All right, there's a bunch of Chandra emblems. Well, let's see if we can draw something now-ish. Down to five. Restoration of Ajano, that doesn't do anything. Oh, let's start drawing cards. Uh, one, two. Draw with Bankbuster. Loot with Azur's Gateway. It's also a land. Get rid of the planes. Well, draw with Lauren. We're drawing with everything possible. Draw with Lauren. It's another planes. Oh, another planes is not good. Now other planes is not what we were hoping for. Oh, we're getting light on mana. One, two, three. Draw with Bonders Enclave. Oh, it's another planes. Okay, that's that is too many planes. One, two, three, four. Okay, one, two. Nykthos. Nine lives. Play the land. Vanquish the horde. Wow, phases out. Oh, I think that does it then. Does it do it? All right, opponent draws a ton of cards. Pumps the team. Phases out Vega. The board gets wrath. Well, we will play Restoration of Ajano. Get a snow covered plains. All right, Wandering Emperor, make a Samurai. Gideon, Emblem, pass the turn. We are trying really hard to piece this together. About it plays a land. Like in theory, Gideon, Gideon can theoretically beat these emblems, right? Cause they can't hit Gideon. So if we can keep Gideon out, that does work. 
emblems. I think we should survive this turn. A lot of desperate digging for lock pieces. It's gonna be, it's gonna be close. It is gonna be close. They can make devils, but we have a blocker. This can't quite currently hit Gideon or kill Gideon. Gonna hit the wandering emperor, okay. Yeah. Young Pyromancer, sure. This Godfarer statue has done some work. Opponent, Lightning Helix kills the token. Well, here's six Chandra pings. Three, a lot of counters on the, on the nine lives. <gasps> Why did one of them ping us? I'm so confused. Well, we're gonna discard a snow covered plane. Search for glory might matter here. Uh, get back spirited companion and draw a card. Search for glory might matter. There is a chance that that actually matters. We draw another land in Lotus Field. One, two, three. Search for glory. Gotta be able to get something and take what? We don't have an angel land, right? We don't. Could take Avison. Other permanents have indestructible. How do we keep Gideon from dying is the question. Elish Norn is kind of good. Could take Elspeth just to try to spin for Solemnity. Take Elspeth. One, two. Draw with Bank Buster. Ossification. Well, let's two. Ossification. Get rid of Vega. Pay and pay. All right, opponent uses Surge of Salvation. One, two. Nykthos. Make some mana. Elspeth. Take down Elspeth. Take Book of Exalted Deed. Oh my god, what a game. What a game. Snow covered plains. Loot. Oh my god, that's deification. Uh, get rid of Lotus Field. Play deification on Gideon. Gideon. Take up on whatever. Yeah, let's play Sarah. Make a 4-4. Four, four. Pass the turn. We get an angel. Is there a chance we win this? Is it possible? Opponent. Chandra Torture Defiance, okay. I'm gonna kill the angel. So we will. One, two, three, four, five, six. Crew the bank buster. Just have a body. Opponent. Emblems. I mean, as long as Gideon's alive, block the young. I don't think our opponent understands the lock. I don't think they see it. Yep, nine lives, <laughs> literally up to nine. It gets exiled, but we have Gideon Emblem, so we don't actually lose the game. Chandra Emblems for literal days, but we don't lose the game. We just need to keep a creature on the battlefield. Like that's the, that's it. If we can keep a creature on the battlefield, we're good. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my god. Oh, that's Avacyn, oh my goodness, we might win this. Uh, well, Elspeth, tick up on the angel, give it lifelink. Lifelink does kind of matter. Hit the big Chandra. I cannot believe we're gonna lock up the, what a ridiculous game. Hit the Chandra. Oh, I guess we should have done this first. All right, tick up Sarah, we would have gained one extra life. Gideon, tick up on big Chandra, loot with Azur's Gateway, get rid of a land. Make Nykthos mana, draw with Bonder's Enclave. Avacyn. Turn on Mutavault. Wow, what a ridiculous game. Book of Exalted Deeds the Mutavault. We are going to win it. Yeah, you're, you're go, opponent, you're go. I think we win this. This was one of the most ridiculous historic brawl games I think I've ever played. Seven Chandra emblems currently, but I think we mostly have it locked up. Like our stuff's indestructible. Because it's indestructible, our creatures should live. Because our creatures live, the Gideon should live. Because the Gideon should live, we should live because of deification. And plus, as a backup, we got Mutavault. 
as a platinum angel, which is also indestructible. We have layers upon layers of not being able to die here. And this God Pharaoh statue, I think has dealt every one of the points of damage to our opponent. And I guess we're on turn, I don't even know, 25 or something. I'm pretty sure every point of life lost. Unless our opponent played like an untapped fetch, I don't believe we have attacked them for anything. Yep, add it to the pile. Add it to the pile. What a game. Opponent takes up Chandra, sure. Narset, sweet card. Yeah, Vaga triggers. When do we reach the give up stage? Untap land, maybe now, this might be it. Well, we might as well proliferate. Untap. Chandra emblem forever. Although it doesn't do anything. Eight Chandra emblems. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Oh, and the mana tithe. I don't know if it'll do anything, but that's mana tithe. All right, I think the time has come to try to win. Elspeth. Give Gideon flying. An opponent scoops it up, and that has to be one of the one of the greatest brawl games of all time. We spent 20 turns just trying to stay alive, trying to stay alive, trying to stay alive against the Chandra emblem. And right as the clock is running out, right as the clock is running out, we managed to uh, we managed to find the the deification to go with the Gideon, and then eventually the the Avizen. That was just a that was an amazing game. The only thing that could have made it better is if we could have managed something but that was spectacular so this last game is actually a, a bit of a bonus game I'd say uh, I wasn't planning on using this game for content this was one of the earliest games I played with the deck and if I get a chance I like to play a couple games without actually recording just to make sure I'm not you know forgetting anything how does the deck feel so this was supposed to just be a, a test game to see if the deck had all the pieces was I missing any super salty cards but I've learned I should just always leave my computer recording if I'm playing Magic because you never know when something interesting is gonna happen. And this match, this game, ended up being, I think the most absurd game of Magic that I've ever played. And I don't even mean the most absurd game of Historic Brawl, I mean Magic period. So uh, we're playing our same deck, trying to do salty things, trying to lock people out of the game, seeing if people scoop. Our opponent's playing maybe my all-time favorite commander in Yarak, just a Panharmonicon on his deck, getting all the value, playing all the flibble fibs, drawing all the cards. So what happens to make this game so absurd and bonus game worthy. Well, first, to understand why any of this matters, you gotta know just a tiny bit about Historic Brawl. So my understanding of Historic Brawl is since it's a casual format and it's not ranked, there's no clock on the game. So in theory, a game of Historic Brawl could go on for two hours or five hours or two weeks for that matter. So there's no clock on the game because you can just scoop. Like uh, there's no rank on the line. There's no prizes on the line. So if you're done playing, you can just concede, you don't lose anything. Uh, so the way this game works out is we assemble one of our locks. We assemble the Book of Exalted Deeds Mutavolt lock. Uh, if you've never seen this lock before, Book of Exalted Deeds can put a counter on an angel and give it the ability that we can't lose a game and our opponent can't win the game. Essentially, it turns the angel into a platinum angel. In Mutavolt, it's a land that's all creature types, so that includes angel. So the trick is you turn on Mutavolt and you put the counter with Book of Exalted Deeds on it to turn it into a platinum angel. And while most decks can deal with creatures with a removal spell or wrath or whatever, uh, most decks can't deal with land. So the idea is if we just leave Mutavolt in land form, and doubly so, with this hand because we have a flipped invasion of Gabacon which can uh, protect it. We have Surge of Salvation which can protect it. So the idea is if we just leave the Muta Vault with the Platinum Angel Book of Exalted Deeds counter on it in land form, hopefully our opponent can never win the game. Meanwhile, on our opponent's side, they're just going off. They actually think they've won the game. They just GG'd us, uh, not realizing how the Muta Vault, Platinum Angel, Book of Exalted Deeds things works. But our opponent is fully living the Yarok dream. Like, uh, I, I'm i actually kind of jealous. Like, our deck sweet, I love locking people out of the game, but as far as Yaraks go, our opponent is just doing it all. They are drawing so many cards with Barons and Flibble Fips, and they are just like having the time of their life. We're not really interacting with them. Like, sure, they can't win the game at the moment, but we're not disrupting them. We're just letting them do whatever they want to do. We're not playing our Overwhelming Splendor because we really want to be able 
to leave up our Surge of Salvation and leave up the ability to activate Musa Bolt to use the Invasion of Gabacon to protect it if we have to. So our opponent is just like really having a blast over there. Uh, and eventually we realize, okay, there's actually one way we could probably win this game. And that is our opponent's gonna have to draw literally their entire deck. That is our one chance. There is no way with the amount of cards our opponent's drawn in the amount of mana they have. They have like a huge pile of treasures and a huge pile of creatures. Uh, there's no way we're actually gonna be able to kill our opponent. It just is not going to happen. So we realize, okay, we can't die because of this Muna Vault. So I guess we just kind of like kick back and enjoy our negative 35 life and let our opponent play their Guardian Projects and play their Hidasuku and Carries and draw as many cards as possible. Yeah, they got like 50 cards in their deck or something, but sooner or later, our opponent's just gonna draw them all and that's how we win the game. Like our opponent can't kill the Muna Vault. It doesn't seem like at this point. So we just let them keep doing their thing. I mean, that Wall of Blossoms just drew our opponent six cards. Six Magic the Gathering cards. So they're gonna draw through their deck pretty fast. So we're actually feeling pretty good. Like we can just kick back, relax. We don't have to do anything and we will win this game eventually. However, then the alchemy struck. <laughs> So as we're on this do nothing and our opponent will mill out plan, our opponent draws a card that I kind of forgot about because it's an alchemy card. And that card is Oracle of the Alpha. So Oracle of the Alpha, uh, it's an alchemy card that shuffles the power nine into your deck. So when you think of the power nine, <laughs> you probably think of Black Lotus or maybe the Moxin or maybe, you know, Time Walk, Ancestral Recall, some of the strongest cards in the literal history of Magic, like three mana for free with Black Lotus, a bunch of free mocks and mana, extra turns for two mana with Time Walk, or drawing three cards for one mana instant speed with Ancestral. But remember, there's nine cards in the Power Nine, and that ninth card is the forgotten member of the Power Nine, the, the bad member of the Power Nine in Time Twister, which is so far below the rest, it's not actually even banned in Commander, they banned all the Power Nine except for Time Twister, uh, because Time Twister just isn't actually that strong. But in this match, Time Twister is literally everything. Time Twister is three mana. Each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library and draws a new hand. So once our opponent plays the Oracle of Alpha, and actually it's like three Oracle Alphas, and eventually they like blink it and reuse it, and I think they shuffled like, I don't even know. At one point they were almost out of cards, and then their deck size went up to over 100. I think they had like 10 copies of each of the Power Nine in their deck. Uh, but once the Oracle of the Alpha starts doing its thing, and our opponent has all these Time Twister hanging out, all of a sudden, our mill em out plan's not gonna work. Whenever our opponent gets low on cards, they can just take in, cast a time twister and shuffle everything back in and keep the fun going. So our opponent eventually has, I don't even know, like every Moxin in existence, all the Black Lotuses, they are doing all the power 90 things possible, uh, and they are milling our entire deck every turn. Like, they are just doing every single thing, but we can't actually make them lose. They're not gonna mill out because they can just keep looping these time twisters. On the other hand, our opponent can't kill us no matter what they do. Our opponent's hitting us for so much damage, like we're at negative 100 or something. Like, it doesn't matter, they can mill our entire deck every turn, I believe, with Teferi's Time Twister, but they can't kill us because they apparently just have literally no answers to the Muta Vault. So our opponent can't win the game, but we also can't win the game. So this game devolves into a literal test of wills. Like, <laughs> It, magic doesn't matter anymore. None of the actions we take in the game of Magic are gonna do anything to make this game end. None of the actions our opponent takes in a game of Magic is gonna make the game end. Like, neither one of us can actually win the game. It is literally impossible for either one of us to win the game. So what it comes down to is, who gets bored in scoops first? Like, that's gonna determine the winner. Who has to go to the bathroom? Who needs a drink? Who has an emergency? Whose power goes out, internet goes out? That's what's gonna determine this game. Nothing to have to do with magic at all. So eventually this goes on for 
I don't even know, like an hour or something, like in real time. It is just, in, all we're doing is clicking okay. We're clicking okay, we're clicking okay, we're clicking okay. We're not even doing anything. Our deck's being milled, we have nothing we can really do. Our opponent's doing everything, but it doesn't actually matter. So I start to wonder like, how does this end? Can this end? Will this ever end? Who's gonna give up first? Who's gonna be like, okay, I just can't take this never ending game of magic anymore. Uh, and I wanted to see how long it could go. And it went on for like an hour, almost an hour. And then I realized Bear had a vet appointment and I very strongly considered calling the vet at the last minute and being like, hey, sorry, I don't know, my car broke down. I, I, I couldn't actually say, oh, I'm in a game of Magic Arena. I don't think the vet would accept that as a reason for canceling the appointment, but I strongly considered canceling the vet appointment just because I wanted to see, we might still be playing the game actually. Like, I don't think it's possible the game would end. I want to see how long it could go. Would it be two hours, four hours, six hours, eight hours, a week? Like, uh, the game might be going on now several days later, but eventually I realized realized it's not really fair to bear for me to make him miss his vet appointment uh so i can finish playing a game of arena that we can't possibly end ever like there's no point to it it's the most absurd game of all time there is no way this could possibly end this is just gonna go on and on and on i guess theoretically okay in theory and i don't even think in practice this could happen in theory eventually our opponent would run out of time twisters uh, the thing is we know they have recursion in their deck we've seen recursion in their deck so we know that they'll be able to get back the oracle of the alpha from the graveyard and do it again so in practice i don't think they actually will ever run out of time twisters at this point so i think the game literally can end like our opponent can never kill us we can never kill them so in the end i decide to do the right thing for bear and i scoop it up as bad as it fell so i could take him to the vet of all things so i guess the tldr is this game is so absurd that bear won or the vet won but what a ridiculous game of magic for a ridiculous deck what even more magic well make sure to check out the modern against the odds where we use gideon and deification to hard lock opponents out of the game or maybe the video where we count down the least powerful cards to have ever been banned in magic the gathering